I'm on the maiden voyage of the Helios 11, a solar yacht prototype I built in Finland, and now we've reached the frozen canals of France. We're stuck, but the boat is only stuck. I am not stuck. I've taken a trip to Malta to try out some 3D models while the ice is melting from some of the sections of the canals that have been very hard to pass. I decided we're gonna get further faster by trying out the model of the Halo 13 SWAT inspired design. While sailing the Helios 11 for over two months in extremely low light conditions, I've still come to the conclusion that solar yachts, when developed into narrow hulls, are extremely efficient. And we're gonna take it one step further by trying out now this model of a ultra narrow catamaran. So let's get into building the model of the Halo 13 right away. The main components are the two ultra narrow holes that we're gonna build out of a smooth plank. This design here is 13 meters long and we're gonna have two one meter planks. It means our scale is one to 13. This model is surprisingly simple because the only thing touching the water will be these two hulls. They will be naturally very straight even in the final design. Only the nose and the aft will be sharpened. The width of the Halo 13 is only 5 meters, now we have 38 centimeters in this scale model. It's so narrow to solve the pretty much only problem you have on a solar vessel, that is headwind. And if we have a very narrow, sleek catamaran, we can actually perform very well, even if it's kind of stormy. When I was looking at the heavy wind and waves yesterday, I asked myself what kind of a boat could we simply anchor anywhere and be relatively comfortable? That would be the ultimate freedom, so I got even more excited to test the SWAT design because it's well known for its exceptional ability to pierce waves and overall has minimal wave interaction due to the extremely narrow holes that start behaving more like underwater torpedoes than surface floating hulls. After all, the second highest value of a boat, after being a vessel of transport and adventure, is to function as a comfortable home. A silent, stable, yet efficient ride is the ideal, and that ideal is not at all out of reach, even on a relatively small yacht. The model is uh, almost done. It looks primitive and of course we still gotta smooth this out. I have a tool for that, but it's getting quite dark soon, so I won't have time to do that today. Today we're just gonna take a look at how it performs in waves and uh, if it's possible to have a comfortable anchor with something like this. The waves are pretty large for this scale, so I think we're gonna toss it in and see what happens. However, first we gotta measure the weight. The full scale would be sitting at around 5 tons, so this model should be 3.8 kilograms. Let's check the weight. Seems like we have roughly 3.2 kilograms, and the center of balance is looking fairly accurate because uh, it's in the middle of the plank. There's gonna be all the batteries underneath the waterline at the absolute bottom of the twin holes. To make this fair while reaching the 3.8 kilogram target, I'm gonna add mass up here and here 600 grams, so 300 and 300. I think that's close enough. The 3.8 kilogram 5 ton Halo 13 is ready for its first journey. The center of balance sits roughly one meter above the bottom 
when you compare this to the true model. Let's go take a look. I'm gonna put a rope on top of this, push it out there and see how it behaves in the waves. So what I want to see today firsthand is how stable is this configuration with the center of balance placed in this conservative, slightly higher than expected center of balance and how well will this behave in waves when it pierces through the waves, will the wave hit the bottom or will the boat have enough buoyancy to ride on top of the larger waves while piercing through the medium ones. So today I ran the first 1 to 13 scale test of the Halo 13 SWAT design. Nothing fancy yet, this wasn't about speed, efficiency or numbers. I just wanted to see how the model behaves, how it sits in the waves, how it rolls when standing still and how the hulls move through the water. The model was weighted with a realistic mass and center of gravity relative to the full scale design. So what you're seeing here isn't just random. The first thing that became obvious is stability. Waves from all directions, side, head-on, diagonal, and the platform stayed very calm. Even when the waves got big relative to the model size, the motion stayed controlled and uh, predictable. That's exactly what you'd expect from a SWAT design, but it's still reassuring to see it play out in the real water. Despite fairly aggressive waves, the underside of the deck never got slammed. The waves passed under that imaginary floor instead of hitting it. That's important, it suggests low vertical acceleration and very little shock loading, which is exactly what you want for comfort and structural longevity on a catamaran. One thing worth mentioning here is the deck clearance. On this model, the clearance is actually lower than it will be on the real boat. Because I couldn't find a plank with the exact scaled dimensions of the hulls, the miniature ends up with roughly 85 centimeters of deck clearance at full scale. The real Halo 13 will be closer to 1 meter, so if anything, this test is slightly conservative in this regard. Capsize behavior was another big focus. Even with a relatively narrow beam, about 5 meters at full scale for a 13 meter catamaran, the model proved extremely resistant to rolling over. In practical terms, I'd consider the Halo 13 close to uncapsizable under normal sea states. Realistically, only a very large breaking wave at exactly the wrong angle would have a chance of capsizing the vessel. And even then, the hull and cabin geometry combined with a very low center of gravity would strongly favor immediate self-writing. That's a great benefit for an explorer yacht you want to take anywhere. Another thing that stood out was how little stress the structure seemed to experience. This model is intentionally crude, non-rigid, very simple. 16 small screws in total and two sticks holding everything together. Despite that, there was no damage or internal movement and it tells us something important. The wave interaction is low, and because the wave interaction is low, the torsional forces across the hulls are also low. In simple terms, the water isn't trying to twist the hulls apart. So this is exactly what you want to see at this stage. If the model has something wrong, it would show. It would probably break. Instead, even with very basic construction, the platform stayed in one piece. This isn't proof of final performance, but it's a strong signal that we're moving in the right direction. I also want to mention one important thing about how I'm developing these solar yachts. Before I even put this model in the water, I already ran this configuration through my own naval architecture simulation. Over time, I built protocols that put my AI tools into a very sharp builder and simulation mode specifically focused on ultra-efficient, easy-to-build solar yachts. Based on those simulations alone, I was already seeing the same behavior that shows up today. And that doesn't make the physical tests excessive or unnecessary, quite the opposite, 
it's reassuring to see the same results appear right in front of you in real water. So what now remains is the full-scale validation. Only when the real design is in real water can we know for sure. But at this stage, all signs are pointing toward Halo 13 becoming one of the strongest solar yacht designs that is also relatively simple and inexpensive to build, while reaching near super yacht levels of performance and comfort. Tomorrow I'll shape the hulls more accurately for further performance testing in more controlled conditions. I'll also build a properly scaled model of the real Helios 11 so I can compare the two designs side by side. I already know how the Helios behaves in real conditions, so it will be interesting to see that comparison play out directly, comparing the mono to the twin hull. Now subscribe if you want to follow the next tests and to stay tuned to the journey of Helios 11 as we move away from the French winter. I'll be returning to the boat in a couple days once the ice has melted. See you then.